to who he's from after that. He, in this Orwellian New World Order, this dystopian reality that he's living in Melbourne at the moment. Uh, I, yeah, I could literally wax lyrical about how surreal how sci-fi uh, um, everything is at the moment but I, that's not why I'm utilising my finite amount of energy and brain space uh, the point of me doing this was to you just to at least tie a little bit of energy that I've got is to uh, bring bring everyone up to date just to and um, to let everyone know what was happening so if they, no one heard from me for a bit long, a longer bit <laughs> um, yeah, everyone would understand why um, trying to remember where if any of you guys are brought up to so I think I brought everyone up to the me going downhill and um, Dr. Talbot in Sydney um, desperately trying to find someone in Melbourne uh, that he trusted with a case as complex as mine to step up and, and take over care because he, he wouldn't be able to offer you know, the, uh, any practical sort of care anytime soon. Um, so he referred me to uh, Dr. Selena Ward, I think, and she works private clinic and at a Box Hill Hospital. Um, and of course, I, I'm very cautious these days, as, as most people will know, in regards to anything really medical, but um, just honestly not believing anyone really wants wants to help me or isn't going to make me ten times worse than I already am. Um, I had a telehealth uh, appointment with her. Um, she was in. I could see her pajamas on under under her under her jumper. Her kids' mugs, and drawings on the fridge. Um, kind of. See, she was like a. A hands full during the pandemic, kind of like, I don't know, made it easier to. See her as a human. And. Let, let my guard down. Uh, our appointment went for an hour and she press, pushed back another appointment to speak with me for another 40, 40, a half hour, 45 minutes. Um, really was thorough to the point, um, inquisitive um, and straight with me. Um, she told me what no one has previously, not even Dr. Talbot, but I think the opportunity has not come up for Dr. Talbot to to let me know um, how bad or what was actually going on because I hadn't been able to go up for my, my, my follow-up appointment with early on in February, March this year. I did not know how... I thought I thought it was just facing stenosis um, and that that could be fixed with a bypass or, and I would get some sense of normality again. Um, uh, it turns out that is not the case. She, um, so, uh, Dr. Selena, uh, explained to me that 85-95% of people have any kind of stomach surgery, so hernia repair, bariatrics, and you know, recover, go through their healing period, and um, back to a sense of normalcy. Um, there is a very small percentage of people, and to this day, she is, you know, it is very adamant. Really. There is no way to tell. No one can tell. There are no markers. No one can tell that this small percentage of other people, that if you interfere with their stomach in even the smallest of ways, their stomach will react with a vengeance. If it can go wrong, it will, and it does. If you interfere with it, the more you interfere with it, the worse it, it, it tends to get. <laughs> the worse it, you know, 
I'm trying, I'm, I'm, yeah, you're not with it right now, I'm, I'm trying to get this out, um, so basically, um, I seem to fall into this percentage of people, this small percentage of people whose stomach is aggressively against being interfered with, and, um, so, um, my stomach is, there is not just a stenosis that is limiting, like, causing it, um, a physical, um, side effect, um, causing, you know, putting a physical barrier up to me getting nutrition in, but unbeknownst to me, um, um, I've actually got nerve damage at the top of my stomach, so my stomach, it doesn't, it's not firing properly, it's, it's not completely dead, um, but, like, it's not reliably, um, and, um, as it should, um, working as a stomach should, pushing food down, um, and it, this could be causing pain, and sometimes when I'm in pain, but, you know, we're not quite sure, so I, I have a two-part problem, <laughs> one of which, um, as previously discussed with Dr. Talbot, you can look at addressing with, um, moving bowel up to, by, you know, above the point of the stenosis, or, um, doing a bypass, but again, because my stomach doesn't like being messed with, risk of more stenosis and any complications there. And um, that, that's not even taking into account the secondary issue of the nerve damage, um, which likely will react the more we poke into it. And it's very hard to fix the nerve damage, especially with something as complicated as stomach stuff. And as it is mostly like it does function, just not reliably. And as it you know, firing as it should, the chance of us poking at it further and we you know, increase the risk of losing, well, like you know, making it worse, which we do not want. Um, and then um, even if we fix negate one problem being the stenosis we're still faced with the issue of the nerve damage um, which in a, in a couple of years time as vitamin deficiencies do take a while to to start feeling the physical effects of um, would put me in the same position I'm in now where I'm stuff stuff starts breaking because I can't get enough in So, likely, um, we'll, the stenosis will be addressed in the best, you know, the best, best way possible. Like, however, you know, however, Dr. Selena you know, wants to address that. And um, I um, um, will most, most likely need assisted. Um, you know, have need assistance getting the right nutrients in. Um, for the rest of my life, and that will be via most likely a peg, and I'll be have a I'll eat what I can, and have um, core nutrients um, by assisted feeds um, be, um, that are feeding tube through my to my, through my stomach, through a port in my stomach for the rest of my life. And there's no way to tell, and that's why I like. When you hear of some people's cases going bad with stomach surgeries, like it could be a hernia op repair operation when this could happen. L l they're so bad, like. I had a COVID test on Friday, and which is mandatory, so you can be a. Um, be cleared for elective surgery like that's you need I'm um, clean obviously I won't go anywhere um, but you need a pass one um, I um, all elective surgeries have been cancelled except high priority I it's uh, Dr. Selena put me on high priority um, and got me in I think two weeks after we, I think it's a week and a half since we spoke um, at the Box Hill Hospital um, now 
she doesn't want to didn't want to do this but like she really would like to see what's going on with her own two eyes rather than re re rely on scans because it is so complicated and she was handpicked by dr talbot because he she she had you know she which i and i know i know why after speaking with her she is very very good at what she does i i feel as secure as i can with a medical professional i guess um she's very thorough and i can see her being the sort of person i want on my team if um when when prone a hard problem um she wants to have a look herself so she wants me to be put under and have another endoscopy knowing that my current weight is barely above 39 40 kilos um she wouldn't do it unless she had to um she wouldn't do it unless it was necessary um yeah uh she's in discussions with the anesthetist is the best way to get me in and out of this um oh, sorry, I'm 